News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. There's been a train collision and derailment just east of Missoula near Bonner. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. Congratulations, you made it. It's Friday, November 14th, 2014. Our newscast this morning is sponsored by Kootenai Creek Village, the maintenance-free active adult community in Stevensville. Call 777-5387. This occurred late last night, and it's our top story this morning. At about 1023 last night, two Montana rail link trains collided near Bonner. I spoke with MRL spokesman Jim Lewis at about 4 o'clock this morning. He described what happened. At approximately 10.20 p.m. on Thursday night, a loaded grain train impact an empty grain train near Bonner. Two employees were transported to St. Patrick Hospital with minor injuries and have since been released. Approximately 10 rail cars and one locomotive were derailed. Missoula Rural Fire Battalion Chief Brent Brent Christofferson said in a press release that residents in the area heard a crash and then the power went out in their home. Lewis says power has since been restored. All power has been restored to the affected area and all train crossings have been reopened. No loads or hazmat shipments were involved. Rerailing and cleanup will likely begin at daybreak. Service is expected to be restored Friday late afternoon. Lewis says the cause of the accident is still under investigation, whether or not believed to be a factor. Again, there was a train collision and derailment that occurred about 1020 last night, just east of Bonner. Two injured, but uh, not seriously. Both have already been released from the hospital. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel is ordering top-to-bottom changes in how the U.S. nuclear force is operated and managed. The changes come as a result of a series of Associated Press stories that revealed problems in management and morale of the people who control the world's deadliest weapons. Two senior defense officials said the changes are aimed at fixing problems a lengthy study found are rooted in weak leadership. The officials spoke on conditions of anonymity before Hegel's announcement today. He authorized the Air Force to put a four-star general in charge of the nuclear forces. A Veterans Affairs analysis suggests patients continue to face long wait times at some VA facilities in Montana despite efforts to speed access to care. The VA data shows new patients waiting 69 days on average for their first appointment with a primary care physician at the agency's medical center at Fort Harrison. That's up from 48 days reported in a June in a national audit that followed reports of long wait times and falsified records in Phoenix. VA Montana Health Care System Acting Director Johnny Ginnity said at a town hall meeting yesterday for veterans that the latest analysis exaggerates wait times. He says it does not account for walk-in patients and appointments rescheduled after someone else cancels. Missoula police are asking for the public's help in finding two individuals suspected of stealing nearly $5,000 worth of hunting gear. Detective Sergeant Jim Clowder told me yesterday the incident happened Wednesday at Super Walmart. Well, a male and female in a blue SUV were involved in the theft. They took uh, three duffel bags containing hunting equipment, including a firearm. Total value is about $5,000. Any theft that totals more than $1,500 is considered to be a felony. Clowder says police detectives are reviewing the surveillance video from the store. Anybody with information has to contact Detective, Detective Mitch Lang at the police department at 552-6300 or Crime Stoppers 721 4444. Montana Attorney General Tim Fox has written a letter to protest a proposed rule change by the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers. The new rule would broaden the EPA's influence over a variety of waterways. Fox says the law is not needed and it simply is a power grab. It impinges on our state sovereignty. It's, it's illegal in my opinion. Uh, we have great rules and laws. In fact, we have constitutional provisions uh, in the Montana Constitution that protect our environment, in particular our water. And as you know, our Constitution says that the waters in Montana belong to Montana. Fox says an adoption of the proposed rule would hurt Montana agricultural producers and possibly many other types of businesses as well. The EPA's interpretation of the act with this rule, uh, there will be a lot of activities and a lot of small businesses uh, that will be impacted. And frankly, they can't afford to be regulated in this way. But the better point is, Montanans know the solutions to Montana's problems, and we do a very, very good job here in this state in protecting our waters. And we will continue to do that, and we don't need the federal government telling us how to do it. Representatives from at least 17 other states have also written letters in protest to the EPA. 
A 22-year-old Billings man is dead after the pickup he was driving veered off the road in the Billings Heights struck a light pole and crashed into an unoccupied car in a private lot. As Assistant Yellowstone County Coroner Cliff Mahoney says Tyler Salazar died in the crash that was reported about 1245 Thursday morning. Part two of the man who killed Osama bin Laden concluded Wednesday night with former Navy SEAL Robert O'Neill revealing to viewers how it was just luck he was the man to kill bin Laden. The episode began with O'Neill explaining landing procedures, entry into bin Laden's hideaway, and tactics that advanced each SEAL member to the next floor. On the second floor, O'Neill and his team ran into bin Laden's son Khalid. With analysts' help, the team knew bin Laden, as well as a few of his wives and daughters, were on the third floor. He started to talk a little bit, saying something along the lines of uh, suicide vests and the women are doing stuff and we need to get up there. And the more he uh, didn't get excited about this, the more he made it known that it's time to go, because he'd already taken a shot up the stairs. O'Neill says he became the second man in line based on tactics. Now the mission worked out as they continued up the stairs. O'Neill says the first man in line tackled bin Laden's wives and daughters as they reached the third floor, which gave O'Neill a shot at the target to his right. Just walk in, saw him, shot him. He was a threat. He, was, he had to be wearing a suicide vest. That's a threat. I'm within my rules of engagement. He's not surrendering. You know, the two shots are going to be just quick, bap, bap. And then the third shot is however long it takes a person to fall on the floor. So I I was standing above him when he he took his last breath, and I heard it audibly. We met for a second, that's it. O'Neill's interview with Fox News' Peter Ducey can be found online at our website at newstalkkgvo.com. Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks officials in Helena have approved once again a plan by landowners in Montana to control the movement of elk that may be infected with brucellosis. Director of Communications and Education Ron Osheim has details. In Paradise Valley, there's a local working group that, as per commission, a direction or opportunity has put together a plan to minimize the risk of transmission of brucellosis from elk to livestock. And I think this is the third year now that there's been a plan in place. Osheim describes the steps the plan allows. They come up with a plan that includes things potentially fencing, some, in some cases some lethal removal. The whole idea is to minimize the potential risk of transmission to livestock from elk. Brucellosis can cause commercial cattle to prematurely abort their young. News Talk time now is 610. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly cloudy to cloudy skies with scattered snow showers. Highs today will top out in the upper teens. Winds will be breezy with wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour. We'll see less than half an inch of accumulating snow. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13, your first alert station.